All right, I'm so delighted you found <laughs> the chat software. So today, this is how to create a video tutorial about WordPress using free computer software. Um, yeah, and I'm Sarah Snow. So a little bit about me and where this came from. Uh, Florida resident by weekday, traveler by week debt or weekend. Um, I'm a former middle school teacher, so you will totally see that coming out. Um, and how bubbly I am. <laughs> um, I'm a parent and a Sharpay mom. So if you hear whistling or dogs barking, that's what's going on there. Um, I love cooking. I love learning languages, love the ocean. It's great. Um, I am a training team contributor uh, to the WordPress project slash mad scientist. I'm sponsored by Automatic. Um, but yeah, so let, let's set some expectations here. Um, as always, stay courteous, respect yourself and everyone in this room. Um, we are learning together. So that's including me, your, I'm Sarah, your facilitator. I am learning how to make these videos using free open source, just already built in software as well. So you may know some things that I don't, and I can't wait to hear about them. Uh, but I'm hoping you learn some things from me today too. Um, I really see you all as the source of brilliant information. So please share what you know. Um, you know, this really works well with kind, deliberate participation. You know, if someone has a question in the chat box or if we have a problem like we did earlier with the microphones, um, please make sure to just let us know, ask questions, answer questions. Um, there really aren't very many like wrong ideas. You can really throw out whatever comes into your mind, provided it's, you know, courteous and respectful. Um, so yeah, you will be able to find this later um, online. So um, <laughs> let's start a little bit with like where this idea came from. Um, exit out of this real quick. So I'm a contributor for learn.wordpress.org. And I'm lucky enough to create lots of little video tutorials um, that are anywhere from four minutes to 13 to nine. Like they tend to be pretty short, um, but this is where this came from basically is, hey, uh, we are training team contributors, but you don't have to be sponsored by anybody to do this. Um, any one of you in the WordPress community can contribute to learn.wordpress.org. So because I'm sponsored, um, I had a lot of paid technology, um, like I have a really nice microphone and things like that, which, which is great, also causes some problems, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I really want to hear more voices. I want to you to be able to create videos, whether it's for learn.wordpress.org or for yourself. We're going to talk about that too. Um, I really wanted to start exploring how do you make videos just using stuff you've already got or stuff that's free. So this is just one process. Um, I'm probably going to repeat this process on um, an ancient Windows machine that I have. And then I may also try doing this again uh, with a cell phone. But today I am using um, a Mac, um, but I am going to provide information for people who are using Windows, and I have done this before using a Windows machine as well. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. We have some people in the waiting room. Welcome. I am flying a little bit solo today. All right, perfect. So you can create a video for learn.wordpress.org. Let's talk about the software that we are going to be using today. So tools. Um, you might notice on my cursor that there is a red outline um, on this, and also it's been made a little bit bigger, which can be really, really helpful. This one's optional, but it's something that I really like. Um, we're also going to be using a local WordPress environment in Fakerpress with this. That can give you um, a very quick and easy way to create sample content um, that you're welcome to use. Uh, we're also going to be using open source image searches such as Openverse, Pixabay, and Unsplash because one of the things that I encountered when I first started making videos was where do I find images that I'm allowed to use? Um, so these are three places you can. We'll go there in a minute. Um, Google Slides are also your friends. Um, I have a template for you as well, but that that's basically one way that I make videos. So we'll get to that template in a minute. Oh no. Well, you can kind of see it anyway. <clears throat> we're also going to be using some noise canceling software. So we're going to be using crisp today. You also have other options such as magic Mike, which is open source. Let me fly in solo today. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Normally we have co-hosts for this, but you can use either one of those as well. Today we're using Crisp. There is a free version. 
That is not the one that it is. Let's go to Chris Lance. So the free version allows you 60 minutes of noise canceling software. Um, I usually don't use that in a day unless I'm, you know, running videos like this as well. Um, so it's just something to know. Um, any standard headset that you use, you can see the one that I'm using here today. Um, and also we're going to be using Zoom for this. Um, and then the final step is going to be using either iMovie, which I will show you, or uh, Windows Movie Maker. So I've done this process multiple times on multiple different machines. I just happen to be using uh, an Apple product today. So yeah, first of all, I'm curious as to why you're here. So you're obviously interested in making videos about WordPress, which awesome. I cannot wait to see what all you maybe come up with soon. Um, so for whom are you hoping to make videos? Do you want to make them for learn.wordpress, a WordCamp maybe, or a meetup event? I see Larry says that he's doing that for a WordPress meetup. Yes, absolutely. That's exciting. Uh, if you wanted to do this for your own website, a client, someone else, I'm just curious, who is your audience today? So I see some clients. Yep. No vices, interesting, or novices. <laughs> just no vices. <laughs> so you want to make videos for novices? Yes, wonderful. Staff at the university where you work, awesome. Uh, internal content creators that need to update pages, yes. Oh, I love it. All these user guides or a WordPress use, WordPress users with slow sites, awesome. Okay, for remote coworkers, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, y'all have such great audiences. I really hope that this helps you today. <laughs> okay. Well, do know that if you make something really, really cool, whether it is for your audience or learn.wordpress.org, um, you are welcome to use this information. <laughs> so the next thing is, what is something that you think that everyone should know about WordPress? This is about idea generation. Where do ideas come from? What is something everybody should know about WordPress? We're just going to generate some ideas here really quick, just for tutorials. If you were to make a tutorial, what would your tutorial even be about? Backups, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't actually know that we have that many tutorials on WordPress about making backups. That would be really cool. What is WordPress? Awesome, that's another good one. How to install and configure it to begin with, yes. I'm also curious, other topics might be like, what are some things that people get wrong about WordPress? WooCommerce, or just how to sell stuff with WordPress, right? Like that's a really important topic for sure. Or special use cases, AF, ACF Pro interfaces, et cetera. Yep, yep. How to translate WordPress. 20 myths about WordPress. Oh, that reminds me of like a YouTube thing. A lot of people go to YouTube to learn about WordPress for sure too. <laughs> how to make a menu with Gutenberg or the block editor. Yes, that might be something that people get wrong. Um, other ideas. What's something that you'd love to learn about WordPress? Something you'd love to teach? Obviously, y'all came with an audience in mind. So th this part was supposed to be about idea generation, but I can see y'all really like have some, some stellar ideas. Um, awesome. Okay, so that's not the issue. Great. <laughs> so... I really wanted to just make a point that you, our community, you are the source of great inspiration. Like, you know what best, what you need. Um, so thank you for bringing your ideas today and sharing, you know, some of those. Um, and because I am, uh, I'm working with Learn WordPress, like, if you're making a video, I would really love it. If <laughs> there is a need on Learn WordPress, that maybe you submit it and see, like, how that goes. Um, so... I notice, oh, go away thing. No, you can see all of my iMovies. <laughs> there we go. So some of the topics that y'all threw out um, were things like backups, right? Actually, yeah, let's do that. So for Learn WordPress, like how do we make backups? If I scroll down here, I'm seeing a tutorial on managing updates, maybe local WordPress installations for beginners, how to choose the right hosting. But like that is one of the gaps that we have on Learn WordPress right now. And it's a really important one. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, somebody else mentioned how to make a navigation menu. And I'm gonna look at that. Okay, 
ah, how to create a menu with a navigation block that already exists. So as you're making your videos, if you're like, hey, like I want to contribute to WordPress, I want to contribute to the open source project, I highly recommend that you consider uh, contributing here. So we talked about where tutorial ideas came from. Most of you have not said that you're doing this for Learn WordPress, which is fine. I'm going to try and move a little bit faster on this so we can get to like the good stuff here. Um, but if you do want to contribute to WordPress, um, if you do want to contribute to, to Learn WordPress, um, you definitely want to check to make sure it doesn't already exist first. Um, but otherwise, like uh, th there's a whole process there. There's a GitHub board like eh. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that today. This is about how to make a video tutorial. All right, moving forward. Um, if you do want to join us, if you do want to submit a video or something, you're going to want to join us. You're going to want to check out our GitHub board, things like that. Um, but, oh my goodness. If you're interested in submitting video tutorials and having your work appear, I'm going to want to, I'm just getting you a quick link. And then we're going to move on because it is 1214 and we have a lot to cover. Woohoo! So this is everything about the training team here. You can join. Where's that join button? Not that one. Join our team. Here we go. If you would like to join, if you're interested in getting started, um, by all means, uh, take a look here. But, oh my gosh, why won't you copy and paste where I want you to go? Y'all, I am having technical difficulties today. Okay, my chat box is not working. That's a problem. Let me close this and try this again. There it goes. I fixed it. Huzzah. <laughs> All right. Uh, but you can join our training team here. Talks about what we do. Basically, if you make a video tutorial and you think it would be valuable and learn WordPress, we'd love to hear from you. So, All right. Let's move on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to skip all this because yeah, know your audience. All right. So, um, let's get set up some ticks, tips and tricks. So one of the things that you're, you're really going to want to do if you're using free software is if you want a bigger cursor, it's a really good idea to change your pointer size. So if I just look for this pointer size, this is in my system settings which is opened on my other screen. Let's move that over here. And you'll notice that on a Mac specifically, um, I can change that outline color to something else, maybe a yellow or a blue or a red. You, you definitely want it to stand out. So I'm gonna pick like a really nice light yellow for this. You can see it changing on the screen there. So if it's red, it's there, if it's yellow. So this is one way that you can take a minute to, um, to make sure that where you're clicking on the screen is, is extra highlighted. Um, and it's also easy to quickly reset your colors as well. Um, and this option I believe is available on Windows as well. Again, I think I might rerun this at a later point, um, but I can also make the pointer size itty bitty or enormous. So bigger is better, especially for people who have low vision, um, but you also have to be able to like actually click on things as well. So we're going to pick a nice big size for that. Um, and that's something that you can just do on a standard computer here. Um, where did it go? I was going to send the link, but I think I put it in the wrong thing. Oh, yes. So if you need the Windows version of this because you are using a Windows machine, uh, here is a link there in the chat that allows you to figure out your pointer, I believe. So um, again, I will probably do a Windows specific tutorial um, next month on this, not that. So once you have your cursor effect set up, it's nice and big, it's easy to see. Um, the next thing that you're gonna need is, is a place to play. Now, if you have a client website and you're just showing people on their website, like how to do things, great. But if you're like me and you're making new material all the time, um, a local WordPress environment can be really, really useful. So you can use things like Champ, which is open source. You could download this. Oh my goodness. My chat is still not working. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chat. So you can use Champ. You can use MAMP, um, WordPress. 
or the one that we are going to be using today. Just put that up there, though. The one we are going to be using today is local by flywheel. I use them quite a bit um, until WordPress Playground is, is a little bit more uh, finished. So there is going to be a way to do this using um, a, a an environment that's just like a link. Um, so word you, you type in a link to a WordPress thing and it would <laughs> automatically have that playground. But for today, we are going to use local by flywheel. I already have this set up. All you have to do is download it here install it like you would any other program. And I'm just gonna open this and show you just how easy it is to create something new. So I've got a whole bunch of different sites here, but you'll, if you start off with this, it'll just be blank. You just click this little button here in the corner, create a new site, give it a title. Um, I want to make WordPress video. That's going to be the title of our website today. I'm just going to say, oh, whatever's preferred. Give it a username. Give it a password. It's going to automatically create this. Just takes a minute. One says that it's a little slow on your computer. Um, I haven't had that issue on this computer. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there might be something else going on in the background. Um, I or if there, there needs to be like an update to the computer as well. Um, use Windows 11, yeah. So some you might want to you might want to check and see your CPU usage. It's probably outside the scope of today. Um, I haven't had a problem. If anybody has a suggestion though and is like, hey, this was slow and here's how I fix it, drop it in the chat because that would probably be really helpful. Um, but again, there is going to be another way of doing this soon. So soon. Ah, we're not there yet. But I'm going to turn on this one click admin. This will allow me to log in without having to input my username and password. This is just on my machine. And suddenly, huzzah, we have a WordPress installation that we can do all kinds of fun things with. Um, how many of you have like a sample website? I'm just curious. Do you have you created a sample website before? Do you do you do that? Or like, is there a tool that you use? Yes. Your one says, yes, you have a sample website. Great. Many sample websites using local. Awesome, awesome. Tracy says that they use VVV. Okay, I don't know what that is. I don't know that acronym. Hmm. Okay, I said sample website on .com. I have a sample website. It's on, I have one on Pressable and I have one on Bluehost as well, but it can really be hosted anywhere. But let's say that you're new to this. You want to make a tutorial, but like you might be a little time pressed. <laughs> One of the plugins that you are welcome to use here is known as FakerPress. So I'm going to plugins, add new. I'm going to type in FakerPress. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to create a very quick sample website, which can be really, really useful. So I've installed this plugin. I'm clicking activate. We're just getting set up and I'm gonna speed through this really quick just to get it set up. Again, you can watch, watch this again later if you need to like slow it down. Um, but it, it really seems like we've got some really good experienced people here too. So I wanna honor that. Um, so once I have Faker Press activated, I can have it auto-generate stuff. So before I do this, currently my theme is the 2023 theme. It looks like this. It's not particularly pretty. Clients may not enjoy looking at this. I wouldn't use something like this for the most part um, on learn.wordpress.org. I'd probably want something with a little bit more, more meat to it, make it a little bit more robust. So using this Faker Press plugin, I can generate random posts. So I'm gonna generate 14 posts. And I'm going to backdate it from, I don't know, this month, right? What is, what is today's date? The 10th. So 2, 1, 2, 10. Because if I do it in the future, it's going to schedule those posts. I don't want that. Um, and I'm going to use, rather than placeholder, I'm going to use Lorem Pixum. And Lorem Pixum <laughs> uses images from Unsplash. And it will randomly pull images that you can use as placeholders that you can also use in this as well. So it's really helpful there. Um, there's a lot of other things here. We're not going to go into depth about how to use this, but I'm just going to show you that if I do that, I have Lorem Pixum. 
I've made 14 posts from this month. I'm going to generate this. And it's going to sit here and load. <laughs> um, one thing that will start happening is that my posts over here will start to exist. So if I click over here, you'll notice that all of these new posts are here. It's still generating on the background or on the back end. But if I go to appearance editor, behold, I have a website. It's a lot faster. Um, I may need to add a few more images in here as well to get the effect that I really want. Um, but now you have a very quick and easy way to start playing with this. So you have your, your WordPress environment set up and ready to go. Chris, thank you so much for that suggestion. Um, you can try webserver.com. Um, there may be less limitations and it might have better performance. So that's great. Uh, I love that option. Okay, so once we have our WordPress installation set up, we have our cursor, what next? What next? Um, so we've got Faker Press. Um, you also probably need to find some free images. A lot of this is like the pre-thinking work, right? Um, so you do definitely want to use free open source or at least free for commercial use images. So some of the things that you can use here, WordPress.org has recently launched um, a beautiful, what is it? New ecosystem known as Openverse. And here I can search for images. Uh, I don't know, look for parents because I have birds. <laughs> I can look for images and I can filter how I want to do this. Um, so use, use commercially, like if you're using this for clients or whatever, or whatever else, or the public domain mark. And now with this in mind, I can use any of these images that I would like for whatever type of project. So that's one um, place that you can look. Highly recommend this as a resource. Another place that I tend to use is Pixabay. They have their own license here as well. It's a little bit more limited, um, but it's pretty clear where you can find the license, but it'll say things like free to use, no attribution required. It's very, very polite to say, yes, I got this from Pixabay from this glorious uh, photographer. It's a really good idea. It's really nice. It shows that you appreciate their work, but you don't have to. Um, so it's just something to note. And the last one is Unsplash that we will mention today. Now, there may be others. Does anybody have another resource um, that they love for images or maybe videos? Because you, as you start to collect these things, you will eventually put them together, which we will get to in a minute. I'm just curious. Are there any others that you want to include as I fix my chat box again? Pexels.com, yes. Okay, that's a good one, yep. Thank you, Yusuf, appreciate that. So a lot of this is, is the pre-work, right? Like you have a topic in mind, like making a backup, right? So you need to figure out your cursor, you need to figure out what your local environment's going to look like. Um, you definitely are probably gonna want some images in there to add to your website. Um, Chris says that they use burst.shopify.com for free images. Fascinating. Okay, cool. Um, so the next thing that you may want to set up is Google Slides because as much fun as it can be to, you know what, I'm going to open this in a new tab and I'm going to be able to switch back and forth. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Slideshow. Here we go. Maybe. There we are. Um, so you can, with the tools that we're about to talk about, um, just kind of talk your way through things and be like, oh, okay, if I want to make a, I don't know, for example, migration plugin, I'll go to plugins, add new. I will search for a glorious backup plugin. Obviously you wouldn't write that, there probably is no plugin called that. <laughs> or just backup plugin, right? And you can just talk your way through it. Like th that is totally a valid way to do that. Um, but if you're like me and you tend to um, struggle with, with remembering what you were saying as you're saying it, so I'm neurodiverse, I have ADHD, 
Um, which means that a lot of the times, like I need a script, I need to follow it because if I, I'm like, okay, well, I want to say something and it needs to be targeted and poignant and whatever else, like it can be kind of challenging. Um, Google slides tends to fix that. I tend to make a lot of mistakes. I lose where I'm going as I'm going to it <laughs> a lot of the time, which is not great for like a learning video. Cause I don't want to be like, okay, guys, like let's go to pages as I go to posts. I do that a lot. So it can be nice to have something to fill some of that space. So especially if you're doing this for learned WordPress, but you're welcome to use this anywhere that you would like. Um, Google Slides is your friend. So I'm going to share this resource with you. Again, you can use this for a learn.wordpress one. You can use this for your own. You can play with it. The biggest thing to keep in mind is you want to have really strong contrast. Um, you want to have a dark enough background with a light enough text so that it's very readable. Um, but this allows you to really clarify. So you can you have a title. This one is specifically for Learn WordPress. We usually like to have a strong learning objective, right? So a learning objective um, is basically what someone will be able will be able to know and be able to do at the end of it. But it's specifically this be able to do. So like if we were to make a backup one, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to uh, install a backup plugin, make a backup plugin, or make a, make a backup of your WordPress website. And then, I don't know, uh, reactivate. I don't even know if that's what reactivate activate that backup. So it's really what people are able to do. That's one way that you can make this really clear, right? And you can use uh, these templates here. Um, with the technology that we're going to use, um, it, this is a really good way to move from slide to slide. This is another way that people can also, like especially if you're doing open source work, you want to be able to translate things. Using Google Slides allows someone to take this, make a copy, and then translate it into their own language. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's a lot easier than putting text on images. It's a lot harder to edit an image with text um, than it is something like this. So highly recommend Google Slides. Um, and then we're going to talk about audio considerations. <laughs> oh, the slide template requires access. Whoops, let me try that again. Anyone with the link, boom, done, all yours. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Um, so you are welcome to use this. Um, make a copy of it. Let me actually fix this so it's back to its default state. <laughs> I just want to be able to be able to do the end of the video. Cool. So again, you're super welcome to use it. And Chris is suggesting template.net. Ooh, this is the first time I've seen that. Thank you, Chris. What's template.net? Ah, ready-made designs and documents and templates for everyone. Fascinating. I don't know. I'd have to do some, some research to make sure that you are allowed to use this for any purpose. Like I, I know there were some people who are doing this for education, um, but if it's a commercial purpose, like we'd have to double check that. So just keep in mind that as you find these resources, uh, double check that you are allowed to use it for the purpose that you are going to use it. So yeah, so all of these are ways that you get set up. Um, they are how you set up your WordPress installation. They are how you find images to add to your media library. And all of these are things that absolutely tripped me up when I first started uh, making videos for Learn WordPress. And so that is something that I think that you would probably uh, have as well. So I hope that you take these and put them in your toolbox. Um, now let's talk about audio considerations. Um, your microphone and crisp. I don't know how loud have my birds been today. Have you been hearing any whistling or has it been pretty, pretty quiet? I've got my noise canceling headphones on. So I'm just curious. Have the birds been bad today? Oh, I can hear them tweeting away. Okay. Um, pretty quiet birds. Okay, sound is good. Well, that that's great because normally they are they are very loud. So today, um, I before I did this today, I made a quick four minute long video using iMovie today using the software that I'm going to show you. Um, 
And I know around Learn WordPress specifically, and probably um, for you, if you are doing this in a public space, uh, your audio considerations are things that you may not have ever thought about. <laughs> Hitchcock would be disappointed about the birds. <laughs> oh, my birds are, are not quite as scary as they could be. Anyway, back on topic. I need to, and I meant to do this. I need to share my sound, which is somewhere so that you can hear the difference. I was going to, to do this live, but then I realized that I wouldn't actually be able to compare and contrast this. Um, share computer sound. Here we go. Oh. Can you still hear me? Awesome. All right. So Charlie said I must have a condenser mic because I hear a slight echo. Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to see if you can hear this. But what I did here is I am going to compare and contrast three different mics. So one, I have a, a kind of high-end microphone. It has a screen in front of it. it it's it's something that you could use to like record voiceovers, things like that. Um, I also compare this little headset here right now. It doesn't have anything to muffle. So you can definitely hear some like explosive little puffs, right? So if I go, you might've heard it get a little louder, like, you know, wind hitting your car. Um, and then I use my computer as well. So these are just some considerations you have before you start recording. Um, to, to just keep in mind so that you can decide for your use case, like what you need. Um, there's obviously a lot of prep work when it comes to creating videos. Um, so these are things that I didn't know that I didn't need to know. So I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to be helpful for you today. All right, I'm going to press play. Please let me know yes or no, if you can hear this and go. Hi friends, for this recording, please note that there are other noise canceling softwares out there, including uh, Miami CV MVNS is one of the top ones, as well as Audio Commander or Iris Clarity. Um, today we're just going to use Chris to demonstrate the effects of different microphones with noise canceling software. So right now I am using a super fancy microphone and Chris with the noise canceling so you can hear this audio quality now, maybe it changed a little bit because I picked up my microphone. But here is our example of that. Um, now I'm going to switch to this standard gaming headset. Um, now I'm switching to my external microphone. Here we go. So this is the external microphone you see here. This is just your standard gaming headset. Got it off of Amazon. It was something like maybe 30 USD at the time. So not super expensive, but you can kind of hear the difference of it. This is not using crisp. So you might hear some parakeets or parrots whistling in the background, which is good. I want you to hear the difference. And then now I'm going to switch just to my MacBook Air microphone. Here we go. Now, this is me talking using just my, my MacBook Air. So the computer that I'm using to talk to you today is capturing my voice. So now I'm going to try and do that with Crisp so that you can hear the difference here. Here we go. So right now it's set to me my fancy one. Let me change this to my external microphone. Ha 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 ha. All right, let's move this now. All right, in theory, you should be hearing this here right now. Crisp is on, there's noise canceling in the background. So I'm gonna make a little noise here with my chair so you can just kind of hear it um, or maybe not hear it. My parakeets are being suspiciously quiet right now. So there's that. But if you have kids in the background, you're using this gaming headset um, or just a general gaming headset, you can kind of hear the difference in the quality there. Um, so now let me switch back to another one. This is one of the curses um, of having uh, a really fancy microphone. It picks up everything. And my sound quality, if I get a little closer versus if I'm over here versus if I'm in a different room, it all changes. So it's just it's something to be aware of.
So now I'm going to turn crisp on using my MacBook Air microphone. Here we go. And I'm going to switch back to crisp. <laughs> All right, this is now my sound quality. My birds are being nice and loud. I'm currently using just my laptop. So I wanted you to be able to compare and contrast this. So another thing to consider is recording in another software. Right now I'm using my high-end mic and crisp, but I'm using iMovie to, to record this. And you might notice the sounds a little different from earlier. Compare. So right now I am using a super fancy microphone and crisp with the noise canceling. So you can hear this audio quality now. And now I'm using iMovie, not Zoom. Same microphone, but do you hear a difference? I do. At the end of the day, do your videos need to sound like a radio commercial? What are the most important considerations there? Um, the question is for you to answer now in chat. Thank you. So I guess the question that I have for you to consider for you is what, I'm going to type it in the chat so you can look at it. What means or like what makes good sound quality does it need to sound like a radio jingle right like fall into the gob like does it have to be something that could play on a radio or not so linda just asked if you're using the microphone does zoom change the sound um I think what you're asking is if I'm using Zoom to record, is the sound different than an iMovie? And the answer is yes. So the video that you just saw is one that was recorded in Zoom and then it was edited together in iMovie. Um, so like the uh, transitions and the fade to blacks and stuff like all of that was made in 20 minutes, which is why it was like a little choppy. <laughs> I was putting it together specifically to like compare and contrast all of the different sounds. Um, but I really wanted to demonstrate this because one of the challenges that I found in making consistently high quality videos was that like my office would change a little bit. Like I would put a, something on the wall or I'd move a little bit or my desk would be a standing or like, cause my desk could go up or down. Um, and the sound quality, like I would leave the closet door open in the background and the sound quality couldn't be matched. So <laughs> that was really challenging. And the challenge came because I was using a really high end microphone because it picked up every little difference. So if you're the type of person who really wants high quality sound, you're going to be in the same spot every time you're going to have the same like hand distance that can impact how things sound um, great like a high quality microphone might be really good for you um, but if you're like me and you work all over the house and sometimes you have to move rooms because one of your parrots is screaming for whatever reason or if you are traveling if some days you may be recording in a library um, and other days you may be recording at home something else might be might be a little different so something that I noticed was that my headset while the quality was not as high um, just because it is less expensive there isn't a screen on it anymore because I lost it <laughs> I should probably get one that has like a little bit of foam on the end to prevent the the p and the p and the buh sounds from from doing that um the biggest thing to know is that um like y y different microphones work for different purposes. So sound quality is really important. So if, if you're, if you were to ask me, unless you're staring at my, my desktop, um, for your audio considerations, is what you're saying clear and can it be understood? Um, and keep in mind, people have different levels of hearing, things like that. So if you are making something for television, um, you're going to want to have a really high end microphone. If you're making something for a client or a series of clients, maybe something like this headset might be best for you, but it's good to do just a little bit of testing. Um, and you may have noticed with just using my laptop, like my laptop itself was probably okay. Um, 
it wasn't great. There was a lot of echo. You could definitely hear my birds in the background. Like it picked up a lot of peripheral sounds, even with crisp. Um, but it just kind of depends. Like if I were making something for students in my middle school classroom, the sound quality on my computer would be just fine. So it's not something to overly stress about, but you do need to know your audience. You do need to know where you want to go and what you want to do with it just to make sure. So yeah, just something to keep in mind before you get started. And like I said, if you move around a lot, uh, your sound quality may be hard to match. And you may find that you need to re-record something. WordPress updates pretty frequently. So finding that consistent sound quality is key. So let's see. We have about 15 minutes left. So we've talked a lot about planning. We've talked a lot about where to find the images and all of that. You've been here for that. So the easiest way that I have found that works across all different devices, uh, what should we call it? Uh, Apple computers, I don't even call that now, Mac computers, Windows, maybe even your cell phone. Um, you can fire up a Zoom just like you're doing right here and you can click share your screen. And you can also record that on your computer. So the same technology that I'm using to bring this to you now can be used to save things. So if you look, try and find your, your options on your screen. I'm going to click stop share, but there's a, there's a button that says share screen. Now, if you click it now with me, I'm not going to let you share your screen um, just because it's, it's a safety feature. We've been Zoom bombed in the past, but you share your screen and then there is the record button. And this record button allows you to save files to your computer. So to find where they are, Zoom. Remember what the name of my Zoom recording was. I have a whole lot of them. <laughs> I've done this quite a bit. Like I've got one here from 127, 111. Um, but you just you basically open this file in your iMovie. So I'm going to open up iMovie just really quickly. And you can see how I made that quick little video for you today. Um and now apparently it doesn't like that I am both screen sharing and doing this. But yeah, so trying to think. Um, give me just a quick second. I should have thought about which movie I wanted to share with you ahead of time. Oh, zoom apps. Okay. Uh, for example, I could do a picking fonts video. So I'm going to start this over right here and it's going to load. Huh. So I did make a video on how to pick fonts once. Oh, wait, that's a Camtasia video. That won't work. This one will work. MP4s, not all videos work. Um, you can hear my computer video. So one of the fun things about iMovie is it will play the sound so you can kind of tell where you are. <laughs> um, Wow, that's super distracting. Anyway, so from here, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. So this was made the same way. I just shared my screen with Zoom, recorded it, and pulled it in here. So let's say I wanted to, to split this clip and put something else in there. I can right-click, and it's going to load very slowly because we're currently doing lots of things that my computer needs. Um, I should be able to split this clip. Where is that button? So if I split this clip right here, I'm going to go ahead and detach the audio because I, my brain cannot process. I'm just going to actually, it looks like it's already split. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the sound entirely. You can see how quick that was. Um, but now I've added a transition here and just using your iMovie, I can do all kinds of things. I can add a fade to black transition between these things. And then it turns on to something else. Like you have all of these different options that you can use. You can replace it really fast. You can 
see how it slid there that way. Oh, it's fascinating. Um, you can also re-record audio. So I, I won't be able to do that now, but there is this, just because um, Zoom is using my, my sound right now. But if I press this button here, maybe it'll work. I guess we'll find out. Maybe I can do this simultaneously, but I could record using Zoom, just having it entirely out of it. Yeah. Since I'm using the, the, the audio, it's not recording an iMovie, but you would just speak and you could explain what you were doing. Oh, press add local font, and then you will be able to have this font here. Um, and then you press stop. And you can listen to it. We won't be able to hear it because again, we're using it here. Computers, they're so smart, but not smart. Oh wait, no, it did it. Fascinating. I thought I could only do one at a time. See, I'm learning with you. Um, but this might be a way to ensure that your sound quality is consistent. Um, record the screen shares using Zoom and then actually do the audio after the fact. Um, but you have a lot of options here. So you can add titles. So the, the fun Star Wars effect that I got earlier was right here, right? So, hello, this is like Star Wars. And you'll notice that this is nine seconds long by default, but I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but you'll, you'll be able to see this effect. And these types of things are available both here in iMovie and a similar thing is available in uh, Windows Movie Maker. So there's a lot you can do with things that are just already built into your computer as it stands. Um, as far as the presentation for Windows goes, that'll probably be next time. That's one of my projects right now. Um, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is, is to do that. So yeah, um, and I can definitely do a presentation on this as well. Quickly running out of time here. So we talked about you see, edit your video together, you add transitions, there's finishing touches. Um, but yeah, um, so that, that's basically what you would do is one, you'd prep your workspace using all the tools that we've talked about before. And then two, you would just record using Zoom. And then three, cobble it all together using iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Um, and that is how you would make a video. Um, one of the things that was really cool about this was I was trying to make one that was a, a pretty high quality, like not something that I would put like as a Super Bowl uh, commercial, but like something that is, is high quality for learn.wordpress.org. And I was able to do that using Zoom and using iMovie here, um, just, just using that free technology. So it is possible. Um, I found that this has been, it's actually been a lot easier than some of the paid technology that I've okay. used. It's very user-friendly. Um, yeah. So James just uh, made a really good point. And I think that I think I needed to make a video and I will keep this in mind for my next semester on one of these. Um, in order to access the video over here, you have to finish recording everything in that one Zoom. Now you can make lots of little short videos. Like I could, um, I could do something here and then quit the meeting and then start a new one. It would create lots of little files right away. Um, or you can do everything that you need to do in one fell swoop. So James, that was a really good point. Thank you so much for bringing that up. You have to record in one session or lots of mini sessions, and then you can drag and drop um, multiple recordings into this as well. So we had... Since most of us are not doing this for Learn, if you wanted to do this for Learn WordPress, there's a, a whole process there just to review it and make sure that things are accurate and up to date and spelled correctly and all of that. Um, so if you're interested in this, definitely hop into our training channel. Um, but we did have some user questions today that I wanted to address. And the first question is, is it hard? Um, so... Uh, before I get to that question, I'm going to answer a question that just came in in the chat because it's a really good one. Someone asked, in order to record in Zoom, do you have to be the host and do you have to have a paid account? Um, so no, it's totally free. You can do this using a free account, number one. Um, number two, uh, you, the way to do this is you wouldn't have any viewers. So when you fire up a Zoom like this for yourself for the very first time, it's just you hanging out in the room. So <laughs> um 
with that in mind, like you're basically just, you know, you're having a, a Zoom call with one, uh, but it's a really fun way to record, a very accessible way to record. Um, so as far as, is it hard to make a video tutorial? Um, I think it depends on how comfortable you are experimenting. Uh, I would say that they're usually more time consuming than you would expect. Um, but once you get comfortable with some of these tools, once you've experimented, once you've played around a little bit, um, it does get easier and easier. You find a process that works for you. So my process is usually, you know, record this, do this as if, or record as if I am like giving a short little talk <laughs> um, without my, my face on. I try to turn that off because I don't know, I don't really like to see my own face. Um, and then I go back and I edit it. And times when I get lost, I'm like, oh, okay, like we'll cut this out. Um, and you can, you can cobble it together. Right. So like if let's say that I did something incorrectly here, right. I can put the cursor here. I can press split. I can move over. I can let it play until the part where I don't like it. I can split it again and then I can delete it and boom, it's gone. <laughs> so it's just a matter of getting familiar with the tools and yeah, it is way more time consuming than you'd ever imagine. So that. It depends on how much time you've got. Um, somebody else asked, what are the best open source tools? That's a really great question. Um, we've gone over a lot of these things that are pre-built in, that are free. I don't know that they're necessarily open source. If anybody has any suggestions in the chat, um, there is open source screen recorders. So there are open source screen recorders that exist. Um, I can't remember the one. There's this open broadcaster software is one. OBS is open source. Beautiful. So this is another one that I may experiment with and like have like a more detailed process as well in the future. Um, so open broadcaster software is one. Looks like they have it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So um, it allows you to do video recording and live streaming. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I haven't experimented with this yet. This is just the process that I've used and I've had really good results so far. That doesn't mean it's the best way. This doesn't mean that it's your way. Um, so again, this is, may end up being kind of a series. Um, Cam Studio also has an open source version. That's really cool. Thank you, Larry, I appreciate that. Um, so someone did ask, can I make tutorials about like useful plugins or premium plugins? Um, I think it depends on the plugin. If you're, I wasn't sure, this is something that was sent through Meetup. Um, if you're asking about learn.wordpress.org, um, if you wanna submit a tutorial here, can you make one about plugins? Um, I think the short answer is yes. We do have some brand guidelines. Like you'll notice that when I talked about like using Crisp, I mentioned two others. You just have to mention that there are other options out there. Um, I think we would probably stay away on, at least on learn from uh, endorsing any like premium content. Um, just because we don't want to show favoritism. There are thousands of beautiful plugins and incredible creators who have poured their time, their life, their money, their passion into uh, their plugin. And I, we definitely want to make sure that we honor everybody there. Um, but if you're doing this for like your own client, if you were doing this for the plugin itself, like by all means, like there's no reason that you couldn't. But again, I am not a lawyer. Um, so just make sure that you double check. Um, so we talked about like what hardware or software resources are required. We had that that list at the beginning. Um, so for the most part, you you just need a way to record your sound. You just need a way to record your video. So Zoom, and you just need a way to edit that. Um, and then if you want to include visuals, uh, we provided resources for that as well. Um, and somebody asked, how do I make my tutorial clear? and interesting, which is such a great question and such a detailed question. And we have four minutes left. So I wanted to ask all of y'all um, how you felt about, like, would you be interested? Yeah, <laughs> Larry says it's the hardest part. How do you make this interesting? How do you say something that, you know, hasn't necessarily been said before? Or how do you say it in a new way? How do you say it in a way that helps the world or helps your clients or helps your students? Um, so I was interested in maybe creating a series of these where we work together in workshops um, where you pick a topic that you wanted to create 
um, a tutorial for it. And we would write scripts together and we would workshop them together and we would storyboard and figure, you know, we'd figure out the content, figure out the ways to make it as engaging as possible. Um, and then you'd have a little bit of homework, like you'd have to record your videos since it's really hard to, as you saw with the, the processing issue, just it took a lot longer because we were on this call for my video software to work. So we'd record videos and then we'd piece them together and maybe co-work online a little bit um, and then polish the videos, review them for accuracy, give suggestions, things like this. Um, and then if we were doing something for Learn WordPress, then we would submit it to the training team. So I'm just curious, like, would anybody be interested in a series of this where it's really hands-on, we're all doing this together, we're coming up with the interesting things, and we're critiquing each other's work? I see one yes. Okay, that's great. <laughs> I'm just curious, because this is something I would love to do. Be helpful. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so I may put together something that's a little bit more interactive. This one was obviously a very high level overview of the things you needed to consider and how to do, how to kind of put it all together. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for that. Um, do we have any final questions today? Someone asked which microphone that I'm using. Right now I'm using my fancy microphone. It was my Rode microphone. Um, and the reason for that is that I have left this headset out in the rain one too many times and halfway through talking it sometimes goes in and out um so that's why um but yeah it's it's a little bit more of a, a higher end microphone than something that you get off of amazon so any final questions before we hop off today on a scale of one to five one being i've learned nothing and five being i know everything like this was so great like where do we fall? One, this wasn't really helpful. I kind of knew all this. Five, oh, you really showed me how to put this all together. How, how was this for you today? I saw a 19. Oh, that's so nice of you. <laughs> a six, a four. Okay. Okay. It's tricky. There's all this tech and putting it together is, oh, it's challenging. I took, um, I took some master's courses uh, in 2020 when everybody was going from teaching in person to online teaching and they were using technology from 2004, 2005, things my teachers were, were showing me when I was in high school. So I figured this, I hoped that this would be valuable. Okay, great. I'm seeing some fours and some fives. Excellent. All right. Well, that's it for me today. Have a great day. I hope you go make some really cool tutorials. Um, if you want to find me in Slack, if you make something cool based off of this, I'm Arise in Slack, or you can find uh me at yeah let's I'm trying to figure out how I guess you could meet reach me there but have a great one y'all see you next time you can oh that's right you could leave a comment in this meetup that would be really cool if you make something awesome all right bye